Since the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade last month, more and more businesses have publicly asserted their support for reproductive rights, which of course means that Republicans are once again ramping up their battle against so-called woke capitalism. As we know, the self-styled populist wing of the GOP has been on this warpath for a while. Just last week, Reuters reported that there are now 44 bills or laws across 17 red states that seek to, quote, punish Wall Street for taking stances on gun control, climate change, diversity, and other social issues in a warning for companies that have waded into fractious social debates. For instance, last year, the Texas state legislature passed a law barring any business that, quote, boycotts energy companies or, quote, discriminates against the firearms industry from doing new business with the state. That law has already shut banks like Chase, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America out of the state's municipal bond market. Likewise, back in April, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill stripping Disney of its self-governing status after the company opposed the state legislature's controversial Don't Say Gay law. More recently, Marco Rubio has proposed legislation to prevent companies who cover the costs of abortion travel or gender-affirming care for employees from deducting those expenses from their taxes. In other words, some of the leading figures of the party of big business are increasingly butting heads with the companies they were once so cozy with. Now, of course, the Republicans' sudden interest in curtailing corporate power is just a culture war tantrum. The GOP might not like corporations flying rainbow flags or subsidizing employee abortions, but they're still the exact same party that's desperate to slash corporate taxes, undermine any worker protections or environmental regulations that interfere with profit, and enable the business sector to exert massive influence over politics. So the Republicans who want to indulge their new anti-corporate streak now find themselves in the awkward position of occasionally sounding like they write for Jacobin. For instance, West Virginia's Republican treasurer, Riley Moore, recently complained of corporations, quote, they're using the power of their capital to push their ideas and ideology down onto the rest of us. He's not wrong, but unfortunately for Moore and his party, they've spent approximately a century bulldozing the way for businesses to do exactly that. Now, all that said, at this point, we really shouldn't be too surprised by Republican hypocrisy and dishonesty. After all, we know this is just how they operate. The bigger problem right now is that while Republicans are making a show of trying to undermine the power of the business sector, no matter how ridiculous or disingenuous their motivations may be, on the other side of the aisle, Democrats are doing essentially nothing to rein in corporations. If you ask me, this is a huge political mistake, not least because polling over the last few years has indicated that the American public is increasingly distrustful of big business and immense corporate power. According to Gallup, around 60% of respondents have consistently expressed dissatisfaction with the size and influence of major corporations in the U.S. almost every year since 2010. Likewise, a 2017 survey of 10,000 respondents found that almost two-thirds said they distrusted the Fortune 500 and that 85% of Democrats, along with the somewhat surprising 72% of Republicans, agreed that companies shared too little of their success with employees. Surveys also consistently find that a majority of Americans believe corporations should pay more in taxes. And according to a CNBC poll from earlier this spring, a clear majority of Americans currently say that the ongoing problem of inflation is at least partly the result of corporations taking advantage of the pandemic to pad their profit margins. This is all to say that the Republicans actually seem to be picking a pretty good time to accelerate their attack on so-called woke capitalism. In fact, a recent Pew Research report found that since 2019, the share of Republican voters who say large corporations have a positive impact on the way things are going in the U.S. has declined 24 percentage points from 54 percent to 30 percent. This makes me wonder why the Democratic Party isn't doing more at the moment to go after big business. While a Democratic bill to crack down on price gouging did recently pass in the House, it's safe to say that it'll probably wither in the Senate without so much as a peep from the party leadership. Similarly, back in March, Bernie Sanders introduced a bill to tax large corporations' windfall pandemic profits, but of course, that idea died on the vine as well, thanks to a complete lack of interest from the Democrats. Meanwhile, a few blue state governors, like Gavin Newsom in California, have used the ongoing culture wars as an excuse to appeal to the corporate sector rather than fight it. 
Newsom and several other Democratic governors are now saying they'll offer new business incentives to corporations that want to relocate to their states from Republican states that ban abortion or pass anti-LGBTQ laws. In a public appeal inviting corporations to set up shop in California, Newsom said, quote, it's a point of pride that we welcome you back. We want to celebrate that we have you back. But make no mistake, when it comes to corporations, leaning into the culture wars is a dead end for the Democrats. It lets Republicans position themselves as the underdogs fighting big business at a moment when the corporate sector is historically unpopular among the public. Worse still, it's a distraction from the more fundamental problem, which is that unchecked capitalist power in America continues to warp our democracy and drive economic inequality and will continue to do so no matter how many progressive social causes companies claim to support. To put it another way, over the same period that Democrats and Republicans have been publicly sparring over businesses' stances on abortion and gay rights, those same companies have been raking in record profits and the income gap between CEOs and average workers has continued to widen. And if the Democratic Party lets itself look softer on corporations than Republicans, particularly when inflation continues to outpace wage growth for most workers and gas and food prices remain high, they risk throwing yet more fuel on the ongoing process of class dealignment, where working class voters of all races are increasingly abandoning the party. For some Democratic insiders, of course, this is actually part of the strategy. Politicians like Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, and Joe Biden himself have famously welcomed corporate money to fund their election campaigns. But while cozying up to big business might produce some short-term income for Democrats, the long-term effect will be a party that ultimately undermines its own political efficacy by relying on the support of profit-driven corporations whose interests run counter to the interests of the Democratic Party's voter base, which has already expressed overwhelming support for things like a higher minimum wage, paid sick leave and parental leave, and Medicare for all. Whether you call it woke capitalism, stakeholder capitalism, ethical capitalism, or something else entirely, more and more corporations are embracing progressive social causes. Republicans will naturally use this opportunity to score a few culture war points, and Democrats simply have to avoid taking the bait, or they could very well resign themselves to a narrower, more precarious political coalition that's incapable of actual change. As the historian Kim Phillips Fine wrote earlier this year, Focusing political energy on securing the commitment of a group of business elites would undermine the engagement of a broad democratic base that must be the real basis of substantial reform. To address many of our deepest problems, nothing less than a redistribution of economic and political power will be needed, and it will only be achieved over the opposition of business and the wealthy. If you like this video from The Jacobin Show, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.